Hey, welcome into another edition of Bama and Bourbon with Aaron Suttles from The Athletic. I am Lance Taylor from The Next Round. We do this each and every week. We talk a little Alabama basketball this time of year, and we talk some bourbon. I'm excited. Uh, you know, typically our bourbon is out of bourbon country yep. in Kentucky, and this is actually out of Park City, Utah. Love it. It is High West Whiskey American Prairie Bourbon. So I'm going to bust this bottle open. I was talking to you a little bit before. You've actually heard of this, right? I have. You know, there's some stuff coming out. You know, out west is like the new frontier in, for bourbon. And there's some stuff coming out from the west. Especially Colorado's got a couple good uh, whiskeys and bourbons. And this I've heard a lot about. Haven't had it. My first impression, though, is I really dig the bottle. Oh, and the smell is great. So Maybe really a little to, uh, vanilla and caramel. Really anxious for you. To just a little nab out. right there. See what we got. The color's um, a little light. It is light. This bottle it smells got, good. You know what I like about a good bourbon glass is the weight. I love a good bourbon with bottle you. with the weight. And this, I mean, I love the bottle. No, we're just being <laughs> a little ridiculous, but the bottle is great. Definitely get vanilla. Good finish. Sits on the tongue well. Finish is great. This is good. God, that this. is good. Yeah, I'm digging this. Um, okay, now it says here taste. This is interesting because I don't know what it is. It, it feels like there's um, some weight on the taste, though, that it's got a good body to it. Yep. But it says it's uh, got a balanced flavors of candy corn. I hate candy I, corn. I'm not a candy corn guy myself. Uh, honey nougat. I get honey, definitely. And sweet corn bread biscuits. That's very specific. <laughs> Boy, that is that is out there. They're very unique description, one that we haven't had in the past. So it's High West Distillery. Love it. Uh, the High West Whiskey American Prairie Bourbon. Um, we've got some kind of, is it an antelope? A gazelle? It looks like an antelope. Um, yeah, I don't know what that is. Could be a kudu. I don't know if we have, uh, we have this, It says or, antelope on the back. What is indigenous? I guess, yeah, antelope makes sense to so, use. So stepping onto the plains of the American Prairie Reserve, it's easy to imagine the landscape as Lewis and Clark and Native Americans saw it. With thundering herds of bison racing bands of pronghorn, antelope, and prairie dog towns dotting the horizon. This is very descriptive, this No, bottle. it is, yeah. Whoever is uh, working for them, their creative team I is, like it. Is, is creative. Um, so we've even got a batch number on this. So this is a very small batch, selective. Love it. Um, again, Bam and Bourbon every week is brought to you by our friends at the Beverage Place right there next to the PGA Superstore on Highway 280. And Pink Package located across from Target next to Arby's on 280. One-stop shop for everything. We'll give you more information on Joe and all the guys at Beverage Place and Pink Package. So we'll get back into the High West uh, American Prairie Bourbon here in a minute. I want to talk a little Alabama basketball. Yeah. Team has now lost three of four. They've lost six of nine. Yep. Uh, they've got a tricky game at Ole Miss, yep. um, you know, tomorrow, the day before yeah. or the day after we record this. Um, I don't know what to think. You know, it's, it's one of those that that offense Nate Oates has built is all around shooting the perimeter shot. Yep. But, hell, they hit 14 threes against Auburn and still yeah. lost by 19. And we're abysmal against yeah. Kentucky. What, three oh, of 30? Three of 30. <laughs> three of th which is tough to do. It's very um, tough to do. And, and they have some shooters, obviously – but they don't have as many shooters as last year. And they're not creating as easy as a, a looks, which is, you know, usually their game is drive to the lane, dish out, or get the layup. Yeah. Or get to the free throw line. And they're taking a lot of threes. I mean, they're in the top, I think, 50 in threes taken. I mean, when you typically can get 30 off, and, and that's one of the things that I would ask you, if, if Betty Yako goes 12-8, and eight, Kentucky shoots 40%, they only score 66 yeah. points, and Alabama gets off 33. They should win. It should be a win. They should have won. If, I mean, if you make what? If you make 10, 10 you win by double digits. You win yeah. easily. So you make four more. Yeah, you go, uh, what, it would have been 14, no. Uh, you go seven of 30, which is yeah. pathetic, and you win the game. And you win the game. And that's just where they are right now. They shot 14% in, from three in the first half and were even worse in the second half. And some of that's contagious and just lack of confidence. But they have to be able to shoot three. But it shouldn't be. I mean, Shackelford is a guy you saw it against Auburn. Streaky guy. Quinterly, against... you've got experienced guards yeah. that have been there before. They made a pretty good run in the NCAA tournament last year. They've had big moments. You've seen them beat Gonzaga. You saw the way Shaq played against Gonzaga. Um, you've seen them beat Baylor, Houston. Yeah. I mean, those are quality teams, and it just doesn't make any sense what's going on right now with Alabama basketball. And I hate to put it on a freshman, but if you're going to give him the minutes, it needs to be justified. J.D. Davis is not playing well. No, he's not. He's got to play better. Are you still surprised that NBA scouts are saying this yeah. guy's first round? Yeah. I mean, it's just all upside. Just pure athleticism, which he's got a ton of. But uh, he's got to work on his game a little bit. And he's not hes not helping him a whole lot right now. Yeah. I, I would agree with you. So, uh, 
We're talking Alabama basketball here, Bama and Bourbon with Aaron Suttles from The Athletic. I'm Lance Suttles from The Next Round. Tell your friends, tell them to like, subscribe if they like Bourbon, if they like anything Alabama. I want to get to this arena in a second, but first I want to remind you Bama and Bourbon is brought to you by The Beverage Place, Pink Package, both located right there on 280. One-stop shops, liquor, beer, seltzers, wine, sodas, mixers, cigars, ice, even fresh lemons and limes. They open early, close late, open 9 a.m. every day except Sunday where they open at noon. Get in, see the guys at The Beverage Place and The Pink Package Store. So, um, the new arena. We had yeah. Greg Byrne on the show on Tuesday, the day we're recording this. Yeah. And it uh, looks like this thing's a done deal. Now, the timetable, there's still things, hurdles they got to get past, yeah. but everything pretty much is in concrete. This thing will happen $183 million, Insane. a little over 10000 um, you know, as far as the seating is concerned. Yeah. But, I mean, this is, and you were in school there. Yeah. That place is a crap it's, hole. It's, it's a dark tavern yeah like cavernous big building which but it's is, been archaic for 25 and years and i've always told people when they they say this you can't just tear down coleman it houses too much of their infrastructure athletically from their athletic department the golf coaches offices are in there the, the basketball secretaries and stuff are in there so you have to keep it from an infrastructure standpoint well let me ask you this so if you build this new facility yeah. that they are building uh this complex can you not put those offices there i don't well the basketball certainly the men's basketball yeah. not all of them no I mean, I don't think people realize how big. Have you ever been down in the basement? No, I'll tell you this. So I, I've been all through there. So when I was in school there, um, I took a class. Uh, Barry Schottenheimer, the old yep. baseball coach, yep. um, coaching baseball. That baseball was, offices are in there. Well, one of my electives, yeah, the baseball <laughs> offices. So yeah. our class was actually in his yeah. office, and so yeah. we went up there. But I was just blown away. Like, there's some type of sleeping arrangement. I think Wimp said some recruits had slept there or he had to sleep there. Or it's huge. Coaches were sleeping yeah. there. I forgot exactly what it was, but I mean, there are like beds in that place. Like you walk in like off the street and walk in and there's some hidden offices that you, you'd have to know how to find them to find them. That's where baseball actually is. Then you go upstairs and there's a ton of volleyball, men's and women's golf, gymnastics. And then there's a basement and that halls is like sports information. In the basement is where, it's not really a basement. It's a walkout basement at best. There's the gymnastics practice facility on the back there's the new men's back basketball practice facility on the back so it's going to have to stay and it will stay but the new arena looks sweet yeah i mean it looks great um it looks like you know this is something where construction bids will begin yeah. in about a which, year which is going to take a while itself yeah so you've got that once you get the bids shoveling ground you're looking at another 18 months so I mean, look, this could be 2025 20, i think i'd i'd be on it be happy if it's there before 2026 wow being honest with it and Listen, Greg Byrne and that in the, the development, there's no dummies. They, what, how do they propose this to the board? The Alabama Athletics Competition Venue. Meaning, you pay enough, you're the new Coleman on this. You know, Auburn just sold their naming rights yeah. for Auburn Arena. And I bet you there, there's an opportunity. The Neville's, I think it's Neville yeah, Arena. Neville, if you want an opportunity for your family's history for the right price, you can put your name on that thing. You know what? I, if I had the $400 million and I was a big Bama fan, mm. I think I would pass. And I would spend my money on other things. <laughs> like I'd rather have a house with a, with a waterfall and a moat around it. <laughs> But hey, to each their own, whatever you want to spend your money on. But somebody will do this. You know they will. They absolutely, and they should. I mean, your name is going to be there for all of history yeah. until, they, until they tear it down and build a new one. Uh, look, if Coleman can survive 54 years, hell, yeah. we'll be dead and gone before yeah. this thing. Even people start be. to yeah, bitch and complain about it. You're, you're, you're dead right. It might be. Aaron Suttles from The Athletic. It's Bama and Bourbon, where we talk a little Bama basketball this time of year. We talk a good bourbon. The bourbon we're previewing today, the High West Whiskey like American Prairie Bourbon. Um, look, I don't know where you can get this. Again, it's out of Park City. Um, it says great in cocktails, but the complexity to stand on its own. I agree on standing on its own. I don't I'm, know I'm, why you need to mix it with yeah, anything. I'm enjoying it neat. Um, it got 92 points from the American Prairie Bourbon Tasting Panel, um, whatever that means. Yeah. I don't know what the proof on this thing is. I can't find it. It's 46% alcohol by volume, but it does not have a proof. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know what it is. Um, but it's in line with, with most. I mean, again, it's not overpowering at all. It's very, very smooth. Um, they say the blend is a straight bourbon whiskeys aged two to 13 years, but uh, I mean, I think High West uh, didn't know what to expect. I didn't either, and I've, but I've heard good things. Again, there's some good whiskey and bourbon coming out of the West right now. It, it seems like to be this spot. You talk about it, for your bourbon connoisseur though, um, is it, you know, we talk about, you know, the blue bloods of college basketball yeah. and football. Do bourbon snobs think, hey, look, this has got to be from bourbon country, the bourbon trail? Not really. I think it's so wide open now, and in the, in the industry and the market has been so flooded with new ones. I think people are open to new 
to new bourbon, sort of the way like you connect sneakers or collect sneakers. You want to try to, it's, it's about finding the bottle and adding it to your collection. So yeah. I think people are really open, like with bourbon, you're not going to find, I mean, I guess if you're really, really brand loyal, you'll buy the same thing over and over. But when I go, I'm trying to add a new bottle to my collection. I've got the old stuff. I want, I want, I mean, the blue bloods, I want the new stuff. Well, I think that's one of the fun things for a bourbon collector too, is like, if you go out of state, you know, to go to different packages so stores. much fun. And just look it. around because the variety is always going to be so different. And I, I, I haven't tried this personally. Can you order online? Like you mentioned yeah. sneakers, and I know like you can buy any pair you want right now if you've got enough money, depending on you know what you're what you're after right now. Um, but the bourbons, do people shop online? Yeah, and in fact, I think it's a new law where you can now actually ship. Now I don't know about like some of the other stuff's going to be hard to find, but like I'm I got this app on my phone, and I just bid and won a bottle of uh, the ten year. Um, Henry McKenna, and it was shipped to my house. So now that was an auction. I don't know if the now rules... do you open that or I've already got a bottle. I just wanted a backup. Bottle. Okay, yeah. So. so that's where you get. You start collecting, <laughs> and you want a bottle that you can sit with friends. Exactly. Then you want a backup bottle that that's nobody right. touches. I've actually got a couple of those backup bottles at the house. And I know right a guy who watched this documentary. This this high end like sneakerhead. He buys two pairs of each Jordan that's released, one to wear and one just to keep on display. I'll tell you, so what I've what I've do, this is this is just on shoes. Like if I find a pair that I really like, then I'll go back before they discontinue and I'll get that's another smart. pair. Yeah. Just because I'm one of those when my stuff gets scuffed up, I can't wear it. I'm with you. And so then I'll I'll have that pair that I'll bust out. So I'll mm. make it about a year, year and a half on a pair, and then I'll bust it out for another. I just year, broke out the Jordan fours the other night for the, that party I was telling you about. I went to. No, I saw those look good. Yeah, I love them. Then did you get those online? Uh, I bought no, I bought those in uh, Baton Rouge a couple years ago when I was there for the Alabama LSU game. They had them in. Like a sneaker shop. So it's Bama and Bourbon, a podcast we do every single week here. It is brought to you by the Beverage Place and Pink Package. Uh, with Aaron Suttles from The Athletic, I'm Lance Taylor from The Next Round. We are talking High West Distillery, the American Prairie Bourbon. They've got a rye that we're actually going to preview next week. So I'm excited I'm about forward. that. We've, we've already got that in the works. So it's going to be like kind of a two-part series on the High West Whiskey and their rye. That'll be coming up next week. So before we close out here, um, Alabama at Ole Miss tomorrow. Yep. Then they've got Arkansas. Yep. And I think Arkansas has got a great chance and uh, probably lose by 30 after probably. I say this, of beating yeah. Auburn tonight. Arkansas team that's won eight straight. Mississippi State at Kentucky at Vanderbilt. There is a realistic chance they could lose all five of those games. That's brutal. You know, Lenardi just came out with his projections today. They're a six seed, which I know a lot of Alabama fans. That arrow is pointing down, right? They are very much trending down the way they look. But we talked about it. As much and as difficult as that game was to watch, you hit a couple more threes, you win that game. So the people that are saying they're not trying, the effort isn't there. I think the effort is there. They've corrected as much as they can talent-wise in in terms of defending, but they're just not knocking down shots. But I'm with you all year long. These are games on paper. Most they should win most of those. Yeah, look, it's not going to surprise you if they lose them. Yeah, and, and I do think this is a talented team. Obviously, if you, if you beat Baylor and you lose to everybody else, it's one thing. But when you can beat Gonzaga, mm-hmm. Houston, and Baylor in the same season, yep. you can play Auburn within basically a possession the first meeting yep. this year. It's a good team. It just hasn't come together. And yeah. my thing is, once you get into an NCAA tournament, you've got some power at the top, but you've got a ton of balance. Is Alabama going to be good enough to win more than two or three games in a row. No, I, I just haven't seen it from this team this year. I, I think the goal, the top end ceiling for this team right now, make it to the second week. Yeah. I think that's a success. And I think Alabama fans, you know, going into the season wouldn't have wanted that right. based on this, the season they had last year mm-hmm. and the expectation coming in. But I think now where you are sitting at 14 and nine and what, four and six in conference, yeah. I think you would take, hey, we'll take a Sweet 16, we'll continue to build on this thing. and You should accept the Sweet 16. And I think the outside pressure that, that no one really wants to talk about because of the rivalry is it hurts Alabama a little more that they won the regular season last year and the tournament, and then Auburn turns around as the number one team in the country yep. this year. Well, and Alabama's still good, but they're not Auburn. And I think Nate Oates said it best. Listen, Auburn's better. There's no harm in admitting that. And I know it bruises your ego a little bit. Auburn's better this year, but as you mentioned, that first meeting, Alabama, Alabama played them down to a possession. Yeah, look, and the future's bright. I mean, look, Nate Oates is a hell of a coach. Um, it's it's just been a weird year. You got two McDonald's All Americans coming in next year. You got a brand new basketball arena being built. A lot of positivity for this. Yeah, program. They, they, exactly. So this thing is trending in the right direction. And it's just awesome to have really good basketball in state where we've got something to actually talk about in the months <laughs> of February and going into March. Yeah. Uh, anyway, tell your friends uh, about the podcast. We would appreciate that. We do it every single week here on the next round. It is Bama and Bourbon. Remember to uh, subscribe to uh, the great writing. 
from Aaron Suttles from The Athletic. We would appreciate that. And try this out. I don't know where you can find it. You can try Beverage Place and Pink Package. I bet you can find it. Yeah, they're definitely those places. Yeah, I, p- I picked it up yesterday from the Beverage Place. Um, but it does seem like it's it's not something that I've ever seen on the shelves before. Mm-hmm. But you said that you had heard of it. Yep. But we both uh, highly recommend the American Prairie Bourbon from High West Distillery right there in Park City. Look, have a wonderful week. We'll be back next week talking more Bama and Bourbon right here on the next round. Thank you.